My name is Darren Lee, and I'm a neurosurgeon here at the University of Southern California. I would like to discuss with you today the surgical treatment of normal pressure hydrocephalus. The goal of surgery is to reduce excess fluid within the brain. Prior to surgery, we discuss each patient's case in our multidisciplinary clinic and conference. The members include our neurologist, urologist, physical therapist, occupational therapist, radiologist, and neurosurgeon. In addition to the specific details of your case, we also discuss various surgical options. There are three surgical options in the treatment of normal pressure hydrocephalus, including ventricular peritoneal shunt, lumbar peritoneal shunt, and endoscopic third ventriculostomy. The ventricular peritoneal shunt diverts fluid from the fluid-filled sacs of the brain, called ventricles, into the abdomen. The lumbar peritoneal shunt diverts fluid from the lumbar spine into the abdomen. The endoscopic third ventriculostomy allows for fluid to pass between two different compartments in the brain. The endoscopic third ventriculostomy allows for fluid to pass between two cerebrospinal fluid compartments within the brain. Once you are deemed a surgical candidate, the next uh, step is obtaining consent for surgery, followed by scheduling you for surgery. Prior to surgery, each patient needs to have medical clearance as well as to obtain preoperative labs. On the day of surgery, you'll meet our entire team in the Keck Hospital. Your team includes an anesthesiologist, the operating room nurse, the surgical tech, as well as your neurosurgeon. Upon entering the operating room, you would then be put to sleep. You would additionally be given preoperative antibiotics to prevent for infection. Once asleep, then the uh, surgical procedure begins. For the ventricular peritoneal shunt, three incisions are made, one on top of the head, one behind the ear, and one in the abdomen. You're given uh, local anesthetic into each of these incisions to prevent or reduce pain. For the ventricular peritoneal shunt, one of the incisions on top of the head is made so that we can uh, make a small hole into the skull and pass a tube into the fluid-filled space or the ventricle in the brain. That tube is then passed underneath the skin and placed into the abdomen. For the lumbar peritoneal shunt, a tube is passed into the spine and then passed into the abdomen, all underneath the skin. For the endoscopic third ventriculostomy, a single incision is made on top of the head, and a small hole is placed into the skull, uh, followed by placing a tube into the ventricle to open up spaces so that the uh, cerebrospinal fluid can pass in between them. Each of the surgeries takes approximately one to two hours. At the end of surgery, you would then proceed to the recovery room, where you'd spend an additional one to three hours until uh, deemed appropriate to transfer to the hospital floor. Once on the hospital floor, you're there for approximately one to two days. During your hospital stay, we will ensure that pain is under control prior to discharge from the hospital. During the immediate post-op period, you should expect some discomfort around the incisions. However, those that pain and discomfort will uh, subside. While the ventricular peritoneal shunt is a tube that passes from the brain into the abdomen, there are a couple of unique uh, details that we need to discuss prior to surgery. One of these details is how much fluid we need to take off. In order to be able to adjust the amount of flow, there are different types of valves that we can use. There are some adjustable valves, and then there are some fixed pressure uh, set valves, which will allow a certain amount of fluid to come out of the brain. In our multidisciplinary clinic, as well as our discussions with you as a patient, we'll discuss the various valve options. Additionally, as, there's, as the ventricular peritoneal shunt uh, and valve can often have a little bit of prominence underneath the skin, we also discuss potential ways to reduce that prominence if desired. We look forward to meeting you and discussing our approaches to normal pressure hydrocephalus at Keck Hospital.